there will not have been a fight between Floyd and Julius. Where were the elders in 2012 when we got expelled? It's not true that ageism resolved political opportunism. He doesn't know what he's talking about. There were elders there in 2012 when the youth was under attack. They, and this youth was not under attack from the youth necessarily. It was under attack from the elders themselves. People forget Izin. So you must not forget Izin. Arieng Rulwa. Comrades, when you lose some votes, you are going to lose some friends. I've been where I am today. That which you see, I've seen it before. That those who were very close to me, I woke up one day, they were nowhere to be found. That those who betrayed me today were the closest after my wife to my glass of water. I now ask myself, what if these people poisoned me? Because every time I stood up to go to a bathroom, I gave over my glass to them. That's how much close these people were to me. But let me tell you, I will never lose confidence on humanity. I'll never lose confidence on the leadership and the cadership of our movement. In revolution, you must all accept there will be days those you trust turn against you. It's not only in revolution. Even in our personal lives, those we trust one day, they will wake up like strangers and people who are not known to us. Especially as we keep on losing votes. You must know every vote you lose, you stand a chance of losing so many opportunities who are coming to you and closer to you because they thought you are about to become something. It doesn't only happen in politics. It's, it happens even in families. You must be alive to that reality. I thank all of you for your messages and your Bible verses. I even thought someone died or something because it was read chapter what what and chapter this and I was like they don't know that it comes with the territory. It looks like it is going to happen for as long as we are in the struggle. But it doesn't mean we must lose confidence and trust in humanity. Comrades, I'm very proud that I stand before you today. There is no single one of them who can ever say I betrayed them. I've never sold anyone in my entire life. People used me. People used me for self-enrichment. People became what they became. I never used them for anything. I can tell you now, when they were accused of killing Godrich's daughter, I stood up for them. If I had a problem with them, I would have been a political opportunist and said, you are now accused of a serious allegation. You need to step aside or step down while we're investigating. I said they will never do that. I didn't have to talk to them. That's how much I believed in these comrades. Had something like that be said about me, were they going to say, not him? Had something about me raping a person said about me, something about rape about me being said, will they say the same thing about me? That not him. But I said without asking them twice whether you were there or not, I said, it's not true. I don't know the facts, but it will never happen. They will never have done that. At every opportunity in their private conversations and in their own cocoons, 
they took that opportunity to discredit me and speak very bad of me. And they thought I didn't know about it. I know them for who they are. But because I chose you, I choose to live with them for the sake of the unity of our movement. You must never, ever use these experiences that, I've have, that I have to become paranoid and see a spy everywhere you walk in the EFF. This must never be a paranoia. This must never be an evidence enough for you not to trust your own comrade and defend them. What they do is their business. Remain principled and defend your own fellow soldiers on the ground. We will not be betrayed today only. We'll be betrayed into the future. But ours doesn't belong to us only. We inherited it from those who died. This is not our struggle. This is a struggle of our forefathers. This is a struggle of those who came before us, died without having achieved the objective of this struggle. So you have no right at all not to believe in this cause because people died for this cause. Because of the behavior of some few individuals. This is a reason more enough for you to remain determined and know why Krisani was killed. Know why these people kill their own comrades. We should be able to learn from history that Thomas Sankara was killed by those who were close to him. But the killing of Thomas Sankara by those who were close to him never deterred you from joining the struggle. Actually, you use that principle and determination. I don't care what they do to me. I don't care what they do to my family. The people on the ground. A revolutionary fighter that is characterized by charitable and practices that principle of the left hand must never know what the right hand is doing. A revolutionary fighter does not dwell in showing off material because you want to be recognized as an individual that possesses material. A revolutionary fighter leads by example and does everything with integrity. A revolutionary fighter is an internationalist who seeks at all times to connect local to international struggle. You can't say you are a revolutionary activist and a fighter, yet you are xenophobic. You can't say you are an activist and a fighter, yet you hate your fellow Africans. Fighters, this is what made you join the EFF. This is what made you fall in love with the EFF. Why do you now look for individual validation for you to pursue that which you signed for? You said you are joining this organization voluntarily without any expectation of material benefit. Why can't you remind yourself of your own oath? Because you took an oath with your organization and the oath is binding on your conscience. All of a sudden, you think that the perspective of this organization should come from the social media. All of a sudden, what Twitter says about xenophobia, about loving Africa and borderless Africa, is what becomes your perspective. You forget why you joined the EFF. You follow that which is sponsored on Twitter. There is no branch of the EFF on Twitter or Facebook that has any right to declare on leadership question of the EFF or dictate to the EFF which direction you must take politically. If you are taking your guidance from the social media, you are a lost soldier. It means Elon Musk is your president because Elon Musk controls Twitter. He can open as many accounts and treat like these are the people who support the EFF whereas they are sponsored accounts of the owner of Twitter. For 
For a second, you must know that Elon Musk comes from South Africa. He's got interest here in South Africa. What stops him from manipulating a Twitter perspective to suit a perspective that will defend the status quo? Where, on all the guiding principles I've alluded to, did they say that Twitter or social media will always give you guidance on what you need to say? Twitter sent you running when you defended that black child, whether she's Nigerian or not, and they even said to you, you must dare defend her, her mother is fraught and everything else. You, all of you went into a cocoon because you responded to a sponsored view which said you must hate this black child, the mother is fraught. For a second, you must love South Africans. And for a second, you also doubted that there was a second where you never loved South Africans. You get told by Twitter, but why, by, you get told by Twitter on what should happen in the EFF the following day. I did not join the struggle on Twitter. I joined the struggle in the dirty, dusty streets of Sishiu. It was the poverty of our people that led me into joining the struggle. There is no media, there is no social media, there is com no commentator, there is no political analyst who can tell me what needs to happen. On all matters, I'm guided by the EFF founding manifesto, the constitution and the code of conduct of the EFF. Why have you surrendered our leadership to Twitter and the Facebook battalions. Comrades, the struggle has, been, has proven over a period of time now that no struggle will ever be won on Twitter. The struggle must be won on the ground by waking the branches of the EFF. I'm not saying you must not participate but when you participate in the social media, you must be a soldier with political consciousness that no apolitical person will ever determine your political process. Comrades, we did not join the struggle to be in power. We joined the struggle to liberate our people. And if our people get liberated tomorrow, even before we get into power, we can resign the struggle because our people are liberated. We are not here to self-seek. We must always stick to the principle. Some of these social media commentators was even saying, you comrades don't love the EFF. You don't want the EFF to win elections. That's why you are saying what you are saying about this child who is a fraud and all of a sudden you are scared to stay your position. Your position on that girl was necessitated by the fact that an African child is under attack. Any other means to defend each other is, is important that we implement it. Not this thing that you are doing, that you choose to fight an African child in favor of a white person and you are still told keep quiet because you don't know why you joined the struggle comrades everyone must know why they joined the EFF every law must know each and every policy position of the EFF and you must never allow the social media commentators to impose on you uncontrollable egos on the leadership of the EFF. Since Floyd left, I've seen so many parading of people on the social media. And all of a sudden, you want that to guide your political perspective as branches of the EFF. No, you are not going to be guided by Twitter. You are going to be guided by your own internal discussions, guided by the Third National People's Assembly guidelines. You must discuss leadership in your branches. You must discuss leadership in your regions. You must discuss leadership in your provinces. Even when there is a provincial position, you must know that you must not put undue pressure 
on the delegates of branches. They can arrive at national conference and still decide to go against the provincial position. Why? 90% of delegates to that national conference will be branches. Therefore, it makes that conference a conference of branches, not a conference of provinces. The branches must always be respected. Do not surrender the power. Do not surrender the power of the branches into the hands of the social media commentators. Comrades, you must die with your boots on. You must be remembered for being a brave warrior and not a coward that became an amuba because the Twitter trends did not favor what you are saying. I do not exist for trends. I exist for building a strong organization on the ground. That's why we agree that every branch that got less than 10% must not go to a conference. Why? It is a principle of 10 years, 10%. Every branch must have 10% because we are 10 years and beyond. So if your branch did not get 10%, don't cry. Our branches are not branches of conferences. They are branches of waking the ground. We are just on the topic of a conference in this regard, not in a topic of whether you are a right branch or not. Your branch might even have achieved more votes than the next branch which has achieved 10%. Don't worry, 10 years, 10%. Just be guided by that. All branches will have one delegate and there will be gender parity and will be guided by zebra approach. We will not be guided by Twitter who's going to be our delegate. The members of the EFF will decide who's going to the conference of the EFF. This is the organization of the branches. It is not the organization of the social commentators. Do not put your, yourself under pressure because of people who are attacking you using the government resources in the government offices. Today, we are told so many hundreds of people got millions of friends from the Department of Sports. I argue all of you to go and check those individuals who benefited money from the Department of Sports. All of them were given money to treat a narrative that suits the government. It is a sponsored agenda by the state to create an impression that the perspective it is in this direction. If you are not careful, this organization is going to be run by Gulam. You don't even know how Gulam looks like. You don't even know who Gulam is. But Gulam informs your thinking because you don't have politics. You have replaced the founding manifesto with Gulam. You have replaced founding manifesto with ENCA, with News 24, and all of the white established hostile media and illiterate 405. I've never seen a channel with such a political illiteracy like. 4.05. If you want to see how bad that channel is, you must look at who's their best anchor. Tolim Gant. That guy's got no idea what's happening. All he did is to wear a nice suit with a tie and blow hot air because he's got a platform to say so. Who are the owners of 4.05? Do you know the relationship of those who own 405 and those who left the EFF? Go and make your research. Who are the owners of 405 and why 405 has taken the posture it has taken? Comrades, all of you who are in provinces that are official oppositions, you must speak every day on SABC. It is not a state broadcaster. It is a public broadcaster. When the premier speaks, you must speak in response of the premier. 
when the MEC speak on potholes, even if you didn't hear, once they bring that to your attention, what time did he speak? Seven o'clock, our right of reply. We must use the SABC as our own tool. It does not belong to these people. Comrades, let's go and establish proper branches to go to BPAs. No one must use money. No one must use social media to decampaign his leaders. No one must produce a list of candidates. No one should threaten anyone for holding a different view. No one must spread malicious rumors about another fighter. No one must leak confidential information to the media in secret. Negative campaigning in the EFF is not allowed. No region must say a branch is created when the branch is not created. No region must say a branch has got a delegate when that branch has got no delegate. No one must use the Facebook, WhatsApp, or Twitter to promote their candidate. Mamri Neilwe, if your name is being discussed on Facebook, WhatsApp, or Twitter as a possible leader of the EFF, you must stand up and say, not in my name. Do not discuss and discredit our organization in my name. Once you are being discussed to succeed the leadership of the EFF or to become the leader of the EFF in public and you keep quiet, it means you agree with what has been said in public. No one must keep quiet. Leaders must stand up and say, do not say such things in my name. Why? We don't want our organization to look like it is disorganized and dysfunctional. And it must never appear like this organization, it is in conflict with itself. Because when you argue in the Facebook and social media, the ordinary masses who follow you do not understand why are these people fighting when they belong to a particular, to the same political organization. Never take that fight to the public. It's a fight that belongs inter internally in the EFF, and when we go outside, we project a united front. Comrades, I'm reminding you of all of this because you must never be overwhelmed by individuals. You must always be overwhelmed by what made you to join the struggle. Many of us forget why we joined the struggle. We did not join Julius Malema. Our organization is 11 years now. It's bigger than Julius Malema. Whether he dies tomorrow, whether he lives tomorrow, our organization should be able to live forever. <laughs> Comrades, it is now time to build an iron wall in defense of our movement. As we confront not only the, our historical enemy, but those amongst us who wish to see the death of this revolutionary movement. We must unite and close ranks against any and all elements that may seek to use our National People's Assembly as an opportunity to infiltrate and destroy the EFF. We must guard against opportunism, factionalism, and self-entitlement, greed, and all attempts to distract us from our generational mission. We have the duty to those who have fallen before us and to future generations to show that the recent elections do not mark an end of the EFF. The doomsayers predicted the death of the EFF too many times. Fellow fighters who have died many times and we must never be afraid to die again because every time they have predicted our death, we have emerged stronger and more resilient. Do not be persuaded by those who have fallen along the way. Do not be discouraged by those who have lost hope because they thought that the revolution is a bed of roses. We must remain confident. We must remain dedicated. We must never be shaken by those who joined our struggle for personal gain. Comrades, 
there is nothing wrong we have done to anyone. We have not wronged anyone internally and externally. Those who left have never said to us, create a space for us to accent into power so that we too can lead. They've never, through their functional groupings or individual courage, come forward and say, you can't be president forever. At some point, there must be president. You celebrate cowards who have never confronted us, who have never said to us, this is our cry, this is what we are complaining about, this is what we need you to do. None of those things have ever happened. And you think those are the brave ones. If they were brave, they were supposed to confront us right in front of us and take the platform internally and challenge our authority. Why should you be encouraged by cowards why should you follow cowards since when cowards determine your future comrades this organization has never had any challenging moment ever we have never amongst the leadership differed fundamentally about anything if that issue is there, let them raise it. And they must tell you at which platform did they raise it and what was the response. That's why they go around spreading malicious rumors because they've got nothing politically solid as to why they betrayed the movement of the people. I was never in the negotiations for GNU. The SG was there, the TG was there. Vuyani was there. I was in Pulukwane throughout the discussions of GNU. I was called by the Secretary General when the negotiations collapsed that you need to come back and apply your skills and find a way to reach out to these people that you worked with before because we're not hearing each other. I was the first one, by the way, who said we need to join the GNU and even declared that in public. The only difference I had with them was that I will not join the GNU that has got a DA and Freedom Front Plus. <laughs> Comrades, today they say to you they were offered positions in the negotiations and when they came to tell me I denied them those positions and I went behind their back to speak to Cyril for me to become a deputy president. Here is your secretary general. Do not do it here. Do it silently in my absence. SG, were you ever offered any position in the negotiations? The answer is no. They were never offered any positions. Maybe in their imaginations, they imagined positions. There was never any position offered in the negotiations. We had never reached that level where we had to discuss positions. We have never. They must tell you who did. I'm saying this in public. Mbalula can contradict that if he wants and say we offered them one, two, three. There was never such a thing. If you remember the Marikana Commission, when Dalimpofu challenged Ramaphosa, in the Marigana Commission, Ramaphosa said to Dalibat, you said one, two, three outside before we came in here, because that is his style, wanting to embarrass Dalimpov. I want to tell you here and now, I've never asked any position of deputy president from Ramaphosa, and I will never do that because I don't have anything to do with what Ramaphosa has to do. I met Cyril and I said this in public, and repeatedly, and I said to Cyril, we cannot go into a coalition with the DA and Freedom Front Plus. We are prepared as the EFF to stay outside and allow you with your 40% to constitute a minority government. And you can be guaranteed of our vote every time you come into parliament as long as you don't go with these two of the DA and the Freedom Front Plus. There was never 
any name mentioned between me and Cyril except the name of Veronica Mente. I said to Cyril, even when you constitute a government of 40%, you must know will demand Deputy Speaker to hold that government accountable. And that Deputy Speaker is Veronica Mente. That's what I told Cyril in the discussion of two people. I said this in public. After that, even after I said this in public, Mbalula responded and said, he find it unprincipled that people have four eyes. And out of that four eyes, EFF president goes and speaks about what happened in that meeting. I told President Ramaphosa in that meeting, I'm going to have to repeat what we discussed here. Because I know in the future, people are going to misinterpret what we spoke about. President Ramaphosa agreed that I can communicate anything that we discussed in that meeting in public because there is nothing untowards which was discussed in public. So who are these clowns to come around and say, I've ever asked for a position from Ramaphosa that they were offered ministers and I denied the ministers because I desperately wanted to be the deputy president. Fighters, I'm the one who said Floyd Shibambo can be Minister of Finance. I'm the one who said I'm even prepared to stand aside as long as you have Floyd Shibambo as a Minister of Finance. Today, I'm the one who went around seeking for positions. So, fighters, you must never listen to the doomsayers who have an agenda to destroy our movement. This movement will never be destroyed by rumor mongering and position mongering by individuals who seek themselves more than the revolution. We have a duty here, Comrade SG, to, pro to propel our movement forward. We have a duty to unite these forces. And as from today, as agreed in the World Council, Secretary General will be the chief whip of the EFF in Parliament and lead the forces of the EFF in pursuit of a radical movement in Parliament. We will not abandon our radicalism in Parliament. We will not abandon our quality input in Parliament. And no treater is going to tell us to abandon the progressive caucus. We are in a progressive caucus because we agreed on a progressive charter. But let me tell you, we are not in alliance with MK. We have nothing to do with MK. What MK does is none of our business. We disagree with MK. We are going to contest MK. We are going to say what we want to say and how we feel about MK. But when we arrive in Parliament, the progressive must unite against the GNU of the racist DA and the Freedom Front Plus. We have no business to be concentrating on MK and what MK does. And no traitor is going to dismantle that which they never established. Before we established a progressive caucus, there was never a traitor perspective that said, when you arrive there, you must go and constitute a progressive caucus. We did it on our own, without being told by those who tell us today to stay out of which they don't know what went behind this idea. We might be angry, we might be disappointed, but we must never lose focus of what we want to attain. And therefore, we must ensure that all progressive parties that belong to the people of South Africa and have been proven through electoral support unite. It is not us who chose MK. The people who chose MK said, you guys go there and become the opposition. And we are going to become the best opposition. Comrades, the GNU must be declared the enemy of the EFF. 
I am shocked because these people who left and who are now willing to leave and who are silent as we speak now are the ones who are saying we must join the GNU. They said to us that we must join the GNU, the DA and Freedom Front Plus will walk away. I asked them the same question I asked even during the negotiations. Just a few days ago, at the anniversary of the EFF and Dalimpov is my witness. I said, if we go in into the GNU, the DA doesn't work out, what do we do? They said the DA will work out. I said, we have heard that part. What if they don't work out? They said we stay. I said, well, I can't stay in a GNU with the DA and the Freedom Front Plus. I refuse. No, the people want to take us to GNU. We are concentrating that the possibility of these people going to GNU, GNU is very high. They go a different direction of where they wanted to take us. We refuse the GNU. We still refuse it. We don't want the GNU. Fighters, we must make sure that all our counselors and all the deployees are disciplined and continue to pursue that which they have been deployed for. The GTU shall fall under the office of the president and all powers that belong to the deputy president will go into the office of the president. And everything else that looks like the former deputy president shall be dismantled in the EFF and then gotten rid of with immediate effect. The GTU and all those who served in the GTU under the deputy president are dissolved. You want to deploy anyone into the government on behalf of the EFF, you shall report to the office of the president. We are taking charge of our organization now. We are tired of entrusting in the hands of wrong people. We have been betrayed for too long. We have been sold out for too long. We have been trusting for too long. We need to take it into our hands and run it ourselves. Comrades, this organization will, will live forever because everybody who hasn't performed well as a deployee of the EFF on Friday next week shall receive the letter from the G GTU to ask why you should remain your position when you have not brought the result during the elections. <laughs> Comrades, we are opening a new chapter now. And this chapter exists without them. If you want to belong to the previous chapter that has got them, you can go and join the previous chapter. We now are opening a new chapter and this chapter shall exist without them. Our destiny begins now. We are marching forward without them. If you are still longing for them, you know where you can find them. They are no longer here. Nothing that looks like them is going to be found in here. Our organization is going to be a pure EFF. Our organization is not going to be EFF during the day and MK at night. Our organization is not going to become GNU during the day and EFF at night. Everything is EFF. We don't speak any other language except the EFF. One of the leaders of the EF of the MKP told me in parliament that the EFF, some of the EFF leaders were so helpful, you know, the way they welcomed us, the way they helped us here in parliament, it was as if they are members of MKP. And I said, oh, which ones? Oh, that's good, which ones? I was given a list of those that welcomed them. And they, for a second, MKP thought these people were members of MKP. 
How can someone think I'm a member of another organization? It's clear that you have not been with us. You have been with them. We have nothing against what those people are doing. Even those who left the EFF, when we arrived there in parliament, will debate on the same side with them like we did now recently with Mutlitama and Sipombata who come from the EFF. When we found them in the MKP, we were never hostile to MKP because it has got members or former members of the EFF. We worked with them in parliament. The same way we are going to work with these ones. Our friendship will start and end on that platform called Parliament. Outside that, CT, the president of the student command, you are right. We have no progressive caucus anywhere. We have no progressive caucus in the universities. We have no progressive caucus in our communities. We have the EFF student command and the EFF. Progressive caucus in parliament, in legislature, in councils, it ends there. When we leave those places, we assume our full independence as organization and confront each other toe for toe because we are in contest for power, all of us. Comrades, we have made it very clear that as we live here today, we are going to KwaZulu-Natal. We will listen to the structures of the EFF.